Hello, and welcome to the Managed Guardian Service. We're thrilled to have you embark on this journey towards efficient and sustainable digital asset management. Our service is designed to make your experience as seamless and beneficial as possible, whether you're handling carbon emissions, carbon offsetting, renewable energy credit creation, or any other environmental assets. This video will guide you through every step of setting up your tenant admins accounts, creating and configuring tenants, and setting up users. To begin, we will sign up for a tenant admin account. Once you enter your name, email address, password, and agree to the terms of use, you will automatically be granted access. You can now use your credentials to proceed. We will now log in as an admin with the credentials we entered in the previous step. This will bring us to the tenant admin screen. From here, you will be able to click on the subscription tab to set up your subscription. In the future, you will be able to enter your billing information and select the right plan for your organization. Now let's click on the Tenants tab. We will click on the Add New Tenant button to bring up the Tenant Configuration dialog box. Think of a tenant as a guardian instance. You can create multiple tenants for different purposes, such as production or sandbox. Here are some important tenant configurations, such as tenant name, network selection for testnet mainnet, or preview net, and IPFS storage provider options. IPFS is a peer-to-peer -peer network protocol that enables decentralized data storage and sharing. In the context of MGS, it serves as a backbone for storing digital environmental assets securely and efficiently. Choosing the right IPFS service provider is crucial for optimizing data accessibility, redundancy, and overall system performance. For this demo, we will select Web3 Storage, and we will also enter the Web3 Storage API key and API proof values. Please view our documentation for instructions on how to create those values. Click the Create Tenant button. To explore the tenant admin screen a little more, let's click the Open button. From here, we can invite users to our tenant. We can customize tenant branding with unique naming, menu colors, button colors, logos, and background images for landing pages. The Settings tab allows tenant admins the ability to change IPFS service providers and modify API keys and proofs. The Service Status displays MGS Service Health, and the Logs tab will display activity within the tenant for monitoring purposes. Let's go into the Users tab and click the Send Invite button to invite our first users to our newly created tenant. Enter the email address for the user and click the Send Invite button. The user will now receive an email that contains a hyperlink that will direct them to the user setup screen. Once the user agrees to the terms and conditions, we can select the account type we want to create. It's best to start with the standard registry user. The standard registry user establishes methodology requirements and issues tokens. We will enter a username and password to register an account. We will now follow the steps on screen to finish the user profile setup. The first step is to select our vault. The Managed Guardian Service Vault is designed to benefit organizations and individuals looking for a self-custody option to securely store their user account secrets, such as private keys. We recommend reading through the documentation to better familiarize yourself with the compatible options. Options include the open-source HashiCorp Vault solution we made available for free, which can be deployed in one click on popular cloud platforms such as Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and AWS. Additionally, we offer GCP Secret Manager and Microsoft Azure Key Vault. You will need to follow the instructions specified in the documentation for setup and the integration of solution credentials. A vault is required when a tenant is configured with a mainnet network. Since this demo is for a testnet network, we will skip the vault setup and use the default MGS Managed Open Source HashiCorp Vault. The next step is to enter a Hedera account ID and a private key. If you don't have one, we recommend reading the documentation for help on how to create these credentials. Once those are entered, 
you will need to fill out your company profile. This is important as everyone will be able to see your company details in the standard registry header topic, and this will inform policy users about who you are as a registry. Once everything is filled out, you can click Connect, and MGS will do the rest to create your user on the network and get the account ready to create schemas and publish policies. After the standard registry user account is created, you will be directed to the profile screen. There you will find some important information about the user, such as the decentralized ID document, along with the verifiable credential document called the VC document. Your first VC document was the company profile we filled out in the previous section. A decentralized ID document is a unique identifier for users. While a VC is digital documents that certifies the attributes or rights of these users. You will also notice a notification tab in the side menu. This screen allows users to monitor various activity notifications. To explore the features available to standard registry users in more detail, let's navigate to the Policy tab in the sidebar and proceed to the Schemas section. Schemas are structured templates that define the format and content of digital documents or data used for standardizing information in policies, tokens, and verifiable credentials. Schemas as available for modules, tags, system initialization, and tools. You can create schemas by clicking the Create Schema button. Each schema field may have mappable properties, and there are many different schema types to choose from. To keep fields confidential, you can select schemas to include encrypted verifiable credentials, which will enable a checkbox for specific fields. Other features include artifacts, modules, policies, tools, and tokens. Let's dive into tokens. Tokens can be created by selecting the Create Token button. From there, you can specify a token name, symbol, and type, such as fungible or non-fungible. You also can configure different token behaviors directly from the user interface. Most of the time will be spent on building policies, so let's navigate to the Policies tab and explain how to get started. Users can create a policy from scratch by clicking on the plus button. Alternatively, users can import a policy by clicking on the Import button. Policies can be imported from a file, from an IPFS timestamp, or users can select a preloaded policy from our Guardian open source library. In this demo, we will import a policy from the open source library. Once selected, you can click on the View Documentation button to learn about the policy and how to correctly interact with it. When the Import button is clicked, all schemas, workflows, and tokens will be imported. After a policy has been imported, we are directed to the Policy Configuration screen. Here you can view all of the policy components used to build the policy workflow. You can click the triangles to expand the workflow. Please send some time reading through the documentation to learn about what every logic block does and how they interact with each other. Let's navigate back to the schema screen to look at our newly imported schemas. Reviewing already build policies and schemas will help you learn how to build your own for your own use case. Let's navigate back to the policies screen. This time, let's switch our policy from being in draft mode to dry run mode. Dry run mode allows users to test and validate the functionality of their policies and workflows in a simulated environment without affecting actual data or assets. You can create virtual users and interact with the policy as policy users in the real world would. Once we are happy with our policies, we can exit dry run mode, and now we can broadcast our policies to policy users in our tenant by clicking on the publish button and entering the policy version number. Once our policy has been published to the network, our last step is to invite policy users to our tenant to begin interacting with the policies and submitting MRV data. Returning to our tenant admin screen, let's send another invite. Like we did for our first user, let's enter an email address and press the send invite button. Just like the first user, the second user will receive an email that contains a hyperlink that will direct them to the user setup screen. 
Once the user agrees to the terms and conditions, we can select the account type we want to create. This time we will create a default user, also known as a policy user. Policy users are also referred to as project developers or project participants. Policy users will interact with the policies published by the standard registry users by submitting MRV data. Once an account is registered, policy users will also need to select a vault like standard registry users. Since this demo is for a testnet network, we will skip the vault setup and use the default MGS Managed Open Source HashiCorp Vault. The next step requires policy users to choose the specific standard registry they wish to engage with. Finally, for the last part of setting up the user profile, you need to provide a Hedera account ID and a private key. Should you not possess these, we advise consulting our documentation for guidance on creating these credentials. After the policy user account is created, you will be directed to the profile screen. Like the standard registry user, you will find some important information about the user such as the decentralized ID document. The sidebar also has a notification screen to monitor activity alerts. However, unlike standard registry users, policy users don't create schemas or policy, rather they interact with them. Navigating to the list of tokens screen, you will see the list of tokens the policy user can associate with, meaning those will be the tokens they wish to receive. Clicking on the Policies tab, you will see the Search for Policies screen. Once the ChatGPT feature becomes available, policy users will be able to use natural language to search for published policies relevant to their MRV activities. They will also have a guided search feature available to them for a more filtered searching approach. Please remember that policies need to be configured with the proper metadata to show up in both advanced search methods. Refer to the documentation for more information. Lastly, policy users can go to the list of policies screen to see a list of published policies the standard registry user made available to them. They can now begin to interact with policies and submit MRV data. And that brings us to the end of our onboarding guide for the Managed Guardian service. We're excited to have you on board and are confident that MGS will transform your experience in managing environmental assets. Remember, our comprehensive documentation is always at your disposal for any further clarification or assistance. If you have any questions or need additional support, please don't hesitate to reach out. Welcome to the MGS community, where together we make a difference for a better, greener tomorrow.